Okay. okay. No. Nope. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We uh, broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it is then posted to our uh, website in our archives later for you to watch um, at your convenience. We um, both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries in Nebraska, and that is for all types of libraries. So we will have things on our show that are for K-12, public libraries, academics, um, museums, uh, correction facilities, uh, anything that's a library, there could be potentially be something on our show that would be of interest to you. Uh, we do a mixture of types of presentations on the show as well, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, uh, demos of projects and services sometimes, um, short demos of course, when we, we're only an hour long show. Uh, so uh, something for everyone in the library world, we hope. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on and do presentations um, about things we are doing specifically here at the commission, things, services, and programs, and products we provide. But we also bring in guest speakers, and that's what we have this morning. Uh, remotely with us, joining us, um, is Noah Lenstra. Good morning, Noah. Hello. Good morning. And he is joining us from North Carolina. He's an assistant professor of library and information science at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. Um, and, and as we're speaking more about today, uh, director of the Let's Move in Libraries movement, which is um, all about uh, getting in shape, eating well, the things we all should be doing no matter what. <laughs> Um, and Noah has been um, done a presentation for us previously, not on Encompass Live, but on our Big Talk from Small Libraries annual um, online conference that we do. Uh, and this is a session that he did actually earlier this year at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries conference, right? Yep, yep, that's yeah, right. Yeah, okay. I've been attending a lot of conferences and things this year. I'm trying to remember where I was yesterday. <laughs> Uh, and I thought it was a great topic, a great session. I was unable to attend it that at conference, um, but um, I invited him to come on here and to share about how we can um, use these resources in our libraries. So I'm just going to hand it over to you, Noah, to take it away. Great. Uh, thanks, Krista. Um, and so I'm really excited to be able to share this hour with you um, talking about how libraries can feed America. And, and my focus is in, in particular on small and rural libraries, uh, which is uh, really the main focus of my research. Um, but I think a lot of the ideas are also applicable in urban and suburban libraries. And I'll be kind of weaving some examples from, from different types of libraries throughout the presentation. Uh, but really, uh, the main focus of, of today's session is not so much how you um, by yourself can feed America. It's really more about how you can use uh, different partnerships um, in your communities and in your regions. Um, and I'm going to focus in particular a little bit later on about how you can work with your local extension agents, uh, which are part of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Um, and they, they within, within that, that includes everything from Master Gardeners to 4-H um, uh, and, and others, uh, the partners you can work with uh, to make a difference um, and to feed America. And so let's go ahead and <laughs> dive right in. And I want to start really by highlighting uh, what is an amazing Encompass Live webinar from earlier this year entitled, How Does Your Library Garden Grow? Presented by the librarian uh, from Beatrice Public Library in Nebraska. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought this is just a, such a creative idea. So like a lot of libraries, they have seeds, uh, a seed collection that you can uh, check out from the library. Um, and I thought, what a, what a great idea to actually have uh, an exhibit um, in the Gage County Fair. So best best produce grown with seeds from the library. Amazing. Uh, this, is, this is exactly the type of creativity kind of uh, partnership that I, I think uh, is really, yeah, just, just absolutely incredible. Um, just really, really shows kind of the, the type of creative thinking I think we, we need more of. 
Um, and so I also want to emphasize that when you're doing things about food, uh, you're also contributing to the library's mission to support lifelong learning. Um, and so this is a message from the Culinary Literacy Toolkit created by the, the Public Library in Philadelphia, um, which um, I have linked in a handout. Um, I, let me really quickly put that link um, into... Uh, sorry about this. I had it pulled up and then I, I closed out of it. Um, but if you want to access uh, the different uh, resources that I'm talking about in my in my presentation, I'm going to go ahead and put a link here. Uh, I have a handout on my website that you can download with with live links to the the different resources that I'll be discussing, including this toolkit. Um, but uh, but really, so they they say that cooking and eating are educational acts. Um, and so what they mean by that uh, is that when you're when you're talking about how food and librarianship relate, um, uh, talk about how people can learn through through cooking and through eating, and and um, there's just so much involved with uh, with cooking and eating that I, I think really connect uh, the library's mission to support lifelong learning. Um, and there's also just um, some more kind of sobering reasons why this is important for libraries to be doing. Um, so as I said, uh, three quarters of the counties with the highest rates of food insecurity are in rural areas. Uh, one in eight Americans do not have access to adequate amounts of nutritious food. Um, and now there's over $16,000 general stores in the U.S. Uh, and these are quickly becoming a primary source of food for, for many uh, rural Americans, um, as well as urban Americans, where we're seeing a rise in, in dollar discount stores, uh, family dollar in particular, and urban communities. Um, and so this is really becoming a crisis. Um, and I think it's uh, most, most communities really um, need some help. And I think libraries can really play a part um, and so I just wanted to highlight a few recent articles. Uh, the New York Times actually published an article yesterday um, entitled uh, Farm Country Feeds America, but just try buying groceries there about how uh, lots of grocery stores in small towns across the country are again, as I said, being replaced by family dollar or dollar generals. Um, and there's a, a lot of innovation that's happening across the country to address uh, these food insecurity issues. Um, and so what that means is that there's lots of potential partnerships, lots of people that you can reach out to and work with in your libraries to, uh, to address this issue. Um, and in particular, I want to just emphasize that I, I think, uh, of course, when we think about meals and food in libraries, um, many of us think about children and, and summer meals uh, during during summer reading. But I, I think it's also to, important to point out that um, uh, food insecurity is especially profound among our, our aging population, our senior citizens. Um, and so, um, yeah, and, and particularly in my region in the southeast, uh, this problem is especially profound. Uh, so, so when you're thinking about uh, food, uh, make sure you're thinking about all ages uh, and not, not only children. So with that kind of uh, sobering uh, note to kind of stress the, the importance of this issue, I now want to highlight four, four things that we can do in our library. So we know this is a problem. We know that this really connects to our core missions of supporting lifelong learning. What can we do? Uh, so the first thing that I've seen libraries do um, in, my, in my research is to uh, simply distribute food. Um, uh, did you know that over 1,000 public libraries across the U.S., uh, and actually it's now over 2,000, I just uh, looked at the most recent data as of 2009, um, over 2,000 public libraries across the U.S. Uh, serve as summer meal sites in the U.S. Department's, um, U.S. Department of Agriculture Summer Feeding Program. It's true, um, and you probably can as well. Um, and just uh, if if you're able to, I'd love to hear uh, if you if you if you and, and your library or a summer feeding site, uh, I'd love to hear that in the chat. Um, uh, but you probably can as well. Um, uh, and so I'd like to make a, a big plug for a new resource guide that was put out by the Collaborative Summer Library Program, which I have uh, on my handout on the website uh, that has a lot of great information about how to get started um, participating in this national initiative. Um, and in California, this, this is the logo of the Lunch at the Library Program, where they have a statewide initiative to encourage more public libraries to take advantage of this free opportunity to provide um, 
free meals uh, through the summer, during the summer months through participating in the summer feeding program. Um, <laughs> but there's other opportunities to distribute food at your libraries beyond the USDA summer feeding program. Um, so other libraries are working with their local food banks um, and other local partners to distribute food. Uh, so I particularly want to highlight uh, the Little Free Pantry model. Um, and so if you just do a, a search for Little Free Pantry, uh, you'll see a lot of examples. This is a particular uh, photo of uh, a Little Free Pantry in a public library um, in Canada. Uh, and really the, the idea... I'm sorry? That's I say that's a great idea. I like that. Yeah. Some of the little free libraries, yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And yeah, and, the, and so it's a national or international movement, and really the slogan is "Take what you need, uh, give what you can." Um, and so this is kind of a kind of a grassroots, uh, simple thing you can do. Um, maybe you could get your um, uh, your local high school students uh, in the vocational training program to to construct a little free pantry for you. Um, another opportunity is to uh, team up with uh, your local food pantry in United Way, which is what they did in Pendleton. Uh, Indiana, where they worked with the local foundation to create this read and feed hybrid food pantry bookmobile. So if you go, if you were to open the doors of this little trailer, uh, half of it is, is food and half of it is books. Um, and so it goes around distributing both food and books um, throughout the, the, the area that the, the Pendleton Community Library serves. Um, and so again, the power of partnerships, the library couldn't do this on its own, but, but teaming up with others, um, you, you kind of uh, are able to, to do things that you wouldn't be able to do on your own. <laughs> um, and if you want to get started- Do you have a comment actually about the read and feed there? Okay, uh, um, let's see, Am I, um, can I see that? No, it's in the questions part, um, okay. but I'll read it here for you. Um, someone says here that the summer read and feed is booming in the libraries in Charlotte County, Florida. And mm. we have also extended the program to during school holidays, spring mm. break, winter break, um, whenever possible too. So not even, not just during the summer. Yeah, that's great. That's I, I love that. That's wonderful to hear. Charlotte County, Florida. Thank thank you so much for sharing that. Um, and so wonderful. Yeah, really, really great to hear. And and I yeah, and and if you're if you want to get started distributing food at your library, um, the number one advice that I would make is to keep it simple. You don't need to necessarily start with some elaborate, you don't need to start and go out and build um, a new bookmobile. Um, you can keep it simple and do something like uh, this library in Clive, Ohio, or Clive Iowa did, um, where they, they simply put up a folding table uh, during the, um, the summer gardening period, um, and they called it the veggie exchange. Uh, and so it's just a table in the foyer of the library. Uh, community members who garden are encouraged to bring in uh, excess produce um, and other residents can come in and take veggies um, and it's just it's that simple it's not um, and so if you want to start uh, do do keep it simple um, uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more uh, in, in, in a minute about uh, liability because I think that's sometimes a concern but there's some ways to make sure that you're you're playing it safe when you when you're distributing food as well um, and as I mentioned, don't forget older adults. Uh, so when you're distributing food, uh, I wanted to highlight these are two libraries, one in Indiana uh, and one in Iowa that actually serve meals for older adults um, uh, during during the outside of the summer. So things get a little bit crazy in, in the library as most places do during the summer months, but during the fall, winter, and spring, um, you can come down to the library in Marion, um, Iowa, and um, and Thorntown, uh, Indiana, and get a hot, nutritious meal at the library. Um, and so in Indiana, they have a suggested donation of $3. Uh, in Marion, it's completely free. Uh, but in both instances, they, they're able to offer this service through a partnership with the Area Agency on Aging, um, as well as local grocery stores that donate uh, food. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so um, don't when you're thinking about things, again, uh, think about uh, your elderly population as well. So that's uh, distributing food at the library. Um, so the second tactic that I've seen libraries do to help uh, feed America is to support community agriculture. And so um, a quick show of hands, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see this, but uh, do any of you have uh, seed libraries uh, at your libraries? So you should be able to use the raise hand um, option on your GoToWebinar interface to let us know if you have a, a, are doing seed seed sharing seed libraries 
Yeah, um, and and so uh, is your. Is I see that picture there with the one using the old card catalog. I think that's yep. great. The same thing that that Beatrice Library, Public Library here in Nebraska that you mentioned before was doing as well. It's it's perfect for that. <laughs> yeah, it is. The old card catalog is the perfect size, and I've seen this in dozens of libraries. This particular photo is from the Pima Library in Tucson, Arizona, but I've seen I've seen this in, in dozens of different libraries. Yeah, I mean the card catalog is the perfect size uh, to. Um, to put uh, put seeds into seed packets, um, and so again, um, um, in most cases, uh, libraries that are doing this uh, are doing it at no cost to themselves. Uh, the seeds are typically donated, um, and um, and so oftentimes, if you tell people you want to start doing this, um, more often than not, you'll find find people that are are more than willing to donate seeds to help you get started. Um, <laughs> The second thing that uh, libraries do to support community agriculture is to organize gardens. Um, so if you have any green space around your library, that's a perfect place to start a garden. Um, this is an example from Miami, Oklahoma. Um, and the image on the right comes from uh, the Walkertown Library here in North Carolina, uh, where the library in 2012 worked with a, a local gardening group to install these raised bed gardens. Um, and again, at no cost to the library. Um, and so every summer, community members are able to check out a plot. And so there's there's a there's a big demand for these plots. So if if people don't maintain their plots, uh, they they lose it. <laughs> and so that that's how they keep keep the momentum going. People want these plots. People want a, a space to garden. So uh, if you're if you're not out there maintaining your garden, it's it goes to the next person on the list. Um, and so they they recently expanded. I think they're now up to 22 plots. Uh, but this is a, a small town of 6,000 people. Um, and uh, yeah, they they found that there was just such a big demand for 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 a space to garden, and the library had the space, so why not start a garden? Um, and if you want to get started in this, I did a presentation uh, this May with uh, the public library uh, in Person County um, here in North Carolina. Um, and so uh, she she really laid out the, the librarian that I worked with kind of created a, a sample budget showing um, how they did it, uh, how they started their grow it in person uh, in person county, North Carolina. Um, and really, uh, again, it's no secret. It comes down to partnerships. These are all the different partners that they worked with at this library. And they really got this started through community conversations. So they, they invited people to come to the library. Hey, we're thinking about starting a garden. Um, what do you all think? Do you all want to work with us to make it happen? And and that's and they did. I mean, it's so it's uh, it's it's again. I think uh, when you're thinking about feeding America, it's all about partnerships and relationships. I can't I can't stress that enough. There's really no no secret to it. Uh, um, and so again, gardening at the library, it's a community thing. Um, uh, you can uh, think of, this, here's a photo of the community coming together uh, to launch a community garden at Hancock County Public Library in Greenfield, Indiana. Um, we're a little bit warmer here in North Carolina um, and uh, the, gar the, the library in Catawba County, North Carolina is actually doing a community garden day uh, this Saturday. So this Saturday from nine to 12, um, Community members are invited to come on down to the library in Newton, North Carolina, and help the library kind of um, prepare the the garden for the winter. Um, get things, yeah, let's close it out. Um, but 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 again, kind of uh, the more you can involve your community members of all ages. Here's a photo of the the community garden in Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so what a great opportunity to support intergenerational bonding connections um, and to really just uh, just foster community. Um, in addition to, of course, growing in some healthy nutritious food that you can donate to food pantries or use uh, if you're doing uh, a cooking class you can use the food from your garden for that class um, just the opportunities are endless um, so uh, I can't emphasize enough. I love the the gardening at the library, uh, but but as I as I mentioned, so what do you do with that food? Um, so one thing you can do with that food is start start supporting healthy eating by having cooking classes. Um, <coughs> so uh, this image on the left um, in Crandon, Wisconsin, the library organized uh, what they called an Iron Chef healthy fruits and vegetables edition to see which families could make the best tasting dishes using healthy ingredients, um, all of which were donated by various partners. Um, and to actually, so they didn't have a space at the library to do this. So they actually teamed up with the local school um, and were able to take over the school's cafeteria for a Saturday, um, or I guess um, a Monday rather, uh, to, to do this program. <laughs> 
Um, and so other partners included the local health department, um, restaurants, uh, the, the, the celebrity judges were the, the chefs at local restaurants. Uh, so, uh, and, and everyone, yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun for everyone. So um, participants were given 30 minutes to create a unique panini dish using an eggplant and other pantry items provided by the library and their partners. Um, the library was also able to display more than 25 items from their collections related to cooking and nutrition as part of the event. Um, 15 competitors developed culinary creations and each took home a panini maker donated by the health department. The grand prize winner took home a Ninja Blender donated by a local nonprofit. Nice. <laughs> yep. So again, power of partnerships. Uh, I, I can't. Uh, there's no secret. There's no. There's no secret thoughts. It's just getting out there, kind of drumming up those partners. Um, and people want this to happen. Uh, there's there's so many partners. Everyone from the area agency on aging, health department, extension. Um, it's uh, and yeah. It's, um, but anyhow, as I said, the program success depended upon the dense web of partnerships that the library had developed and fostered, much like a gardener over the years. Owing to these partnerships, the library's three full-time staff members were able to efficiently plan and deliver a healthy living game centered on increasing nutritional knowledge. Everyone involved took a very hands-on approach, including shopping for and prepping the fresh ingredients. Uh, before the event, planners walked through the participant experience from start to finish um, and con considered details such as how to set up the cafeteria, which rules would be provided um, and the criteria used for judging. The librarian uh, responsible for the program said, thinking about all aspects of the participant experience enabled community members to connect, engage, and learn in an atmosphere of positive collaboration. And I have on the handout a link with more information about this program uh, that was prepared by OCLC Web Junction as part of their Health Happens and Libraries Initiative. Um, and you can do this on the road as well. So this is an example of uh, a library in New Jersey, which uh, uh, goes around and does kind of pop-up cooking classes uh, at, at stops uh, that their bookmobile makes in various places. Um, and uh, I want to make a quick plug. I don't have, well, I, let me see. Oh, I do have a slide for it. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, uh, um, before I get to um, what I wanted to say, I, I also just wanted to say that if you don't have a kitchen, uh, that's not, not really a problem. Uh, teach whatever you can cook. Um, uh, and so you don't have to be uh, a culinary wizard to start start teaching uh, people how to cook. Um, so I want to thank Clancy Poole uh, for sharing this photo and story with me from her library. Uh, Clancy is the branch manager of the St. John branch of the Whitman County Library, which serves a population of 537 um, in Washington State. Uh, her cooking classes for teens and tweens occurs off-site in a church kitchen where they have the facilities needed to successfully run the class. A church member always checks in before and after the program, and normally the church would charge a cleaning fee for a public event, uh, but they waive that fee because the library always leaves everything the way they found out. This is a program offered every month uh, during the summer, but the library has occasionally held them during school vacations uh, as well. Clancy told me uh, we've had decent luck getting small grants to support these programs from banks and community development agencies. The program in this picture was supported by a memorial donation. Um, the donors, uh, the people that gave the money to the library to, en to enable them to offer this program said, quote, grandma was a great cook and always said it was too bad that nobody knows how to fix a meal from scratch anymore. So if you can appeal to popular desire to spread culinary literacy as a basic life skill, um, you too will probably be able to build support around your library's cooking programs. The sad fact is that many Americans of all ages have not had the opportunity to learn about even basic food preparation before. Even fewer Americans understand where food comes from. So even simple things that you can do with minimal equipment may be completely eye-opening and transformative. Um, and finally, uh, when you think about partners, also think about fellow librarians. Uh, uh, so, quick question. Um, I won't. I, I'm not sure if I'll be able to see your responses, but uh, if you can raise your hand, has anyone ever heard of the Charlie Cart Project? Charlie Cart. Yeah, if you've heard of it, raise your hand or comment in the question section. Let us know. 
I have not heard of that one myself, no. Okay, well, I'll, well, I'll give you a brief that. Uh, yeah. So this, briefly, the, the Charlie Cart, so it started in school, so it started in the K-12 school, um, but, uh, it's, it's, uh, but it's since come to library. So the, I know, this is a picture of a Charlie Cart program being offered in Horry County, South Carolina. Um, I know the Rutherford County Library in North Carolina just acquired a Charlie Cart, and they also have one in Stillwater, Oklahoma at the library. Um, but really the Charlie Cart initiative is the bedrock of a new initiative of the South Carolina State Library called Read, Eat, Grow. Um, and so the, the South Carolina Library actually acquired a couple of these Charlie Carts that they uh, are now kind of rotating uh, throughout the state. So libraries um, can kind of get a Charlie Cart. Uh, it'll come uh, through the kind of interlibrary loan system and the, and the kind of the, 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 the trucks that they already have that they use to move things throughout the state. Um, and so um, a Charlie Cart has within it all the supplies you need to do a simple cooking program um, as well as uh, some basic ideas if you don't know how to get started. So it's, it's literally kind of a, a kitchen in a box. Um, and, um, and so they, there's a couple of these that they have that are kind of rotating throughout South Carolina libraries. Um, and they're trying to use this to encourage um, more, more librarians to do cooking classes. And th so this is actually a photo of one of my students, uh, Lindsay Maloney, um, at, at her branch of the Horry County Library, uh, using the South Carolina State Library's Charlie Cart for a pop-up cooking class. Uh, Lindsay told me, um, I made veggie and black bean quesadillas. I had six and seven year olds eating spinach, so I call that a win. <laughs> it was a pop up event, so it wasn't advertised and said we so they didn't even advertise the program. They just they just it was a, they just popped up. It's like, hey, we have a we're just gonna start cooking in the library and see what happens. Um and people were curious, sat down, uh, listened to what Lindsay had to say. Um and there were about 15 people in total that kind of um, participated in this pop up cooking event. Uh, Lindsay said she had so much fun doing this and hopes that she can do it again. Food literacy is a growing trend across the country, so picking a budget-friendly but tasty meal and allowing people to taste test and take the recipe home was a fantastic experience. Um, and so uh, a Charlie cart, uh, again, is the perfect thing to ask for in a grant. Um, so if you're thinking about what you could apply for LSTA funding, that's that's how the, the library in Oklahoma got theirs through an LSTA grant. Um, you can also team up with other libraries. So you could do what they did in South Carolina, where, where um, a number of libraries teamed up to kind of make the, the Charlie cart available. Um, through a consortium, um, but I, I think this is just a really, uh, I think it's only going to become more common for libraries to be having these Charlie carts um, mm -hmm. because it's, it's really the solution to, I don't have a kitchen, what do I do? Well, get a Charlie cart and, and then you have the, the, the things you need to start doing uh, cooking classes at your library. So the fourth uh, and final tactic I want to briefly go over um, is to actually host a farmer's market. Um, and I asked, uh, when I was at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries, um, I actually asked uh, the people in the room, how many of you have actually host farmer's markets at your library? Um, and, and actually about a half dozen librarians actually said that they hosted farmer's markets. Uh, so I'll ask you as well, do any of you uh, host farmer's markets at your library? Yeah, that's wow. interesting. Yeah, because I would say I know we have some that attend the farmers market that already is going on, but like with a library table, you know, yeah. talking about here's what the libraries, libraries, you know, traditional services or things that we offer. Mm -hmm. um, is anybody here uh, doing that in your in your towns and your communities? Do you, are you hosting at at your library a farmers market or somehow working with them? Let us know. Type into the question section. Let us know what you're doing. Yeah, please, please do share. Um, and I just wanted to share them. Um, yeah, and I, I too, uh, when I first started looking into this, I had seen a lot of libraries, uh, yeah, having a booth at farmers markets. Uh, but then the more I looked at it, I actually found that in some places uh, there is no farmers market. And so mm -hmm. the library in those communities is actually creating and sponsoring the farmers market. So this is um, a photo um, from a flyer, the High Point Public Library in High Point, North Carolina which is the official host of the High Point Farmers Market. And they actually even renovated their parking lot to make it more conducive to um, hosting the Farmers Market every Saturday. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's a program of the public library. Um, 
they're doing something similar uh, in Richland County in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, so this is just a memorandum of understanding that the library has uh, with the University of South Carolina's um, SNAP Ed initiative, which is part of the USDA. Uh, so they're they're essentially working with uh, the local university um, as well as the USDA to host farmers market programs um, at a number of their different branches. Mm -hmm. Um, we do have actually a couple of comments here. Um, actually, one of our libraries here in Nebraska uh, says we're looking at doing it for this upcoming summer. So, so next right. summer. Um, and someone else says, I've set up a table at our local farmer's market before, like you mentioned, but we haven't hosted a market at the library, but it's a great idea. So maybe they start doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and no, no need to reinvent the wheel. If your community already has a successful farmer's market, there's no need to kind of replicate that. Uh, but, um, but if, if, if that service is not, not, uh, um, available, it's, it's definitely, I think something that libraries can, can do to help out. So great, uh, so those are the four tactics. So just a quick recap, the four tactics that I've seen libraries do to feed America are distribute food um, in one way or the other, support community agriculture, um, uh, support healthy eating uh, through uh, cooking classes, um, and even host farmer's markets. Um, and now I'm gonna transition a little bit and talk about uh, some of the partners uh, that we can be working with to, to make these four tactics realities in our libraries. Um, and really, uh, I just wanna, actually, I want to let you know, Noah, someone actually just commented too, uh, very interesting about farmers markets, can't wait to talk to our director about this, so might have gotten another library to come on board doing it. Great, great, yeah, that's wonderful, and I'll just, um, I'll, 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 I'll make a, yeah, just a quick, uh, if there's anything I can do to help anyone uh, implement any of these ideas, please do reach out to me after the webinar as well, um, so, uh, as I said, so much of this is really about partnerships. So you can you can definitely consider me a, a partner resource person as well. Um, and that's I think that's really what it all comes down to is those relationships and, and networks. Um, and and one of the most important networks uh, I think we we need to be tapping into is the the U.S. Department of Agriculture um, and in particular their extension system. So. Yeah, if you don't know, every every state um, and most uh, territories um, uh, have actual uh, extension systems. Um, and so if you go to this link, uh, you can actually find your local state extension. Um, uh, and then from there, kind of drill down to uh, most many states have county extension agents. So um, as part of the, so for instance, here in North Carolina, the North Carolina state extension system has uh, agents in all the different counties. Um, and interestingly, I'll just make a, a quick, uh, one, of our, one of our counties, Randolph County um, Public Library actually just won an award, a state award for cooking classes that they're offering in collaboration with uh, the Randolph County uh, Extension Agent, uh, which is part of the North Carolina State Extension. So just uh, just an amazing partner uh, and, and your Extension Agent can uh, connect you to some of the different programs and services offered by the USDA, which include the Master Gardener uh, Initiative, Master Naturalists. Uh, frequently, Extension Agents are trained uh, nutrition educators, um, the 4-H uh, is part of the USDA. Uh, they can also connect you to the USDA summer feeding program. Uh, so um, uh, just uh, if you're not, uh, yeah, actually, um, if, uh, if uh, are you all connected to your extension agents? Uh, I, I'd love to see uh, maybe a show of hands or um, uh, in, maybe in the question, if you could tell me a little bit about how you may work with your, your extension um, agent if you, if you are working with them. And if you're not, uh, you yeah, can just start here. People putting their hands up here. Okay, I know great. also here in Nebraska, we've been working with our extension um, agent uh, for uh, uh, maker spaces that we're putting mm -hmm. in the libraries, so doing the training um, and education about that and um, doing the community connections between this makerspace grant that we have. Um, and we have our ex extension is involved in that as well. Uh, and we do have a comment here. Let's see, bring it over here. Um, thank you for highlighting extension. I am, oh, someone we have on the line here with us. I am a county extension agent with the North Carolina Cooperative Extension. Um, oh, and I regularly work with libraries to support community and school gardens. That's amazing. Uh, and so I'm not sure who, who's making that comment, but uh, I'd love to uh, connect with you after the webinar. And someone else says, our master gardeners, uh, our master gardeners does programming in the library and maintains our flower beds. 
So working great. with them, that's a great idea. And our nutrition, someone else says, our nutrition agent hosts monthly cooking programs at one of our branches, and we do occasional other programs with our extension agents. They're a great resource. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they do so many different things. I we definitely highly recommend connecting with them because especially if there's some topic that you at your library want to do and you're not an expert in it and you're not even sure, you know, who on our staff could even learn all this, mm -hmm. just reach out to them. They've got the programs already set. They yep. do this already. They they will have someone on some topic that they can just come in and they already have everything ready to go for you. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. I just think they're just uh such a such an amazing resource and and i think uh unfortunately when we think about partners for for health related programming we don't think as often about the extension as we should but really supporting health uh, and wellness is one of the the fundamental kind of um missions of the the usda uh, nefa initiative um which is um uh, I can't remember if NEFA is part of the extension or related to it, but um, if, if you want to kind of see the, the bigger picture, just look up NIFA USDA as kind of the, the broader. Um, and, and, and again, not only in rural, I think we think of the extension as only being in rural America, but there's, there's definitely extension agents uh, in New York City. So just a, a quick plug. Um, the Cornell Extension in New York State actually does a lot of programs in New York City. So they, the Cornell Extension has an agent or, or agents um, in New York City. So uh, big cities, small towns, uh, the extension is everywhere. Um, and they're, they're certainly not the only partner, um, but I, I consider them to be the most important. Um, um, other common partners include food banks, um, uh, regional, local food banks. Uh, I mentioned area agencies on aging, councils on aging can be great resources uh, if you want to support uh, Meals on Wheels or other food distribution programs for older adults. Um, your local health department, of course, uh, various gardening and farming groups, including Future Farmers of America. Um, grocery stores, uh, schools, cafeterias especially, but also thinking about uh, high school students that may be in a shop class. Um, they can maybe build you a little free pantry or uh, raised bed gardens. Um, churches, uh, again, they can be a, a great resource for kitchens um, if you want to do a cooking class. Um, scouts, uh, Eagle Scouts uh, may be able to build a garden, uh, raised bed. I've seen that in a number of places. Um, your state library, uh, they may be able to provide you with some funding uh, for something like a Charlie cart. Um, organizations of retirees, uh, so one of the actually really, really interesting, um, when I did this session at ARSL um, in September, someone mentioned that their, their veterans of foreign, affair, foreign wars, uh, the VFW, have actually been a huge partner. Um, their, their kind of little free pantry is essentially kind of maintained by, by the VFW. They come in periodically. Uh, so uh, the, the VFW built the little free pantry, and then they come in and just kind of maintain it, make sure that there's always food there, and, and just kind of keep an eye on it. Um, and so really, the partners, uh, potential partners, are, are limitless. Um, and so, um, um, and um, before, uh, so just to keep in mind, uh, who have you worked with? Uh, we're about to get into the Q and A. Um, uh, but before we get into the Q and A and actually have a structured exercise for the Q and A, um, I want to say that really, uh, feeding America at the library is all about partnerships and relationships. Um, and so I mentioned uh, the Crandon Public Library in Northern Wisconsin that did that Iron Chef uh, Healthy Fruits and Vegetables Edition. Um, Michelle Gobert, uh, the former director, who actually uh, became so passionate about this topic that she now actually works for the, the, the Wisconsin Extension System. So she, so she actually jumped ship and left librarianship to go work for the extension. Um, but anyhow, she said that the library is now seen as a community partner. It has allowed us to be part of the conversation and therefore part of the solution. Um, and so let's let's get out there uh, and let's feed America. Uh, and if there's anything I can do to help, uh, please let me know. Um, and so um, I wanted to just uh, end. Uh, so here's just an example. Uh, if you if you're doing food distribution, you may want to get people to just uh, print and sign, uh, just basically agreeing to hold the library harmless uh, in case that you eat something. Um, that, yeah, that, that may not go down well. Of, of course, advertising, if there's any allergens uh, as part of the program. Um, but uh, uh, I wanted to, for the next uh, 15 minutes, kind of have a, a structured um, exercise. Uh, what's worked for you? What concerns do you have? And how can we work together? And I'm hoping this is going to work technologically, but I, I have kind of um, this, uh, this little sheet here. Um, and so um, uh, I think, um, if you're able to 
respond and the um, and the questions. Um, yeah, but uh, what's worked for you? What concerns do you have? And and how can we work together? Um, and let's let's see if we can get a good conversation going. And and I think Krista mentioned that people actually have the capacity to turn on your mics. Uh, so if you actually want to um, turn on your mic and just just uh, you can do that as well. If that would be easier. Sir, sure, sure. Whichever way you'd like to, you can type into the questions section, or um, I can, if you raise your hand, I can unmute you. I've put down all the hands that were raised from before. Um, but um, yeah, if you want to share this, if you've done anything like this at your libraries um, in your communities, um, let us know. You know, share what you've done, or um, if you're thinking, you know, we had a few libraries that mentioned they were going to be doing, you know, interested in the um, farmers market aspect. Uh, or any concerns that you have, you know, if you are thinking about doing this, what, what are you worried about? Um, we have quite a few people on the line here, so I'm sure people are either already doing something or are or wondering about this for themselves. So um, let us know what you want to know about it. We can either know or other people on the line can um, help with some ideas. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so we have a, a comment here. Uh, the Co Cooperative Extension has been our biggest supporter and cheerleader in this area. They regularly provide cooking programs in our libraries. Um, um, so that's something they've worked it with and no actual, no great concerns for it. It works just fine. <laughs> uh, extension is a great resource. Yeah. Um, has anybody done this something that people didn't answer before or say anything about uh, the seed libraries? I know that that's becoming very popular and we have quite a few libraries here in Nebraska that do it. Um, is anybody else there doing out there doing those at seed lending or seed exchange libraries? Um, and how is that working out? Is anybody having any issues with that? Uh, let's see, we have a few other questions co or comments coming up. Someone says they have a local chef who has come in and presented numerous programs at the library. So right. that's an interesting one to reach out to, just your local um, restaurants, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and I, I've seen that in other places as well, kind of, yeah, just uh, teaming up with the local chef, um, and usually they're they're more than happy to do that. Uh, again, uh, just um, when when you're working with local businesses, make sure that uh, you're you're not just. Uh, uh, yeah, you want to be careful not to just have it be something where, where the chef is just coming in and promoting their business. But if, if you say, hey, if, uh, if anyone, any local chefs want to come in and do a cooking class, um, mm -hmm. I think that's uh, an excellent, excellent idea. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we got a lot more coming in here. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have any rules set in? Here's a question. Do you have any rules set in place when patrons take fresh produce from the veggie exchange? Mm -hmm. Like if someone gets sick and they blame the produce of the library. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you mentioned before, having yeah. something, uh, a policy or uh, something they sign. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, I think there's two ways that you could uh, do that. You could uh, have kind of just, um, so actually I'll go back to that really quickly. You could have um, a form like this um, at the veggie exchange table. Um, that you ask people to print and sign before they they take things, uh, basically saying um, that um, yeah, so you're you're you kind of uh, waive any any liability associated with anything that may occur to you physically as a result of uh, produce that you you acquire. Um, you could also you don't necessarily have to get people to sign. You could just have this uh, have something like this printed and and kind of um, prominently featured on on the veggie table just uh, just as um. And so, um, yeah, so uh, that, that's what I would uh, recommend. That's what I've seen uh, libraries do. Uh, just uh, it doesn't have to be anything too too complicated. Uh, you, you may want to just uh, do a quick uh, check in with um, uh, your your city or county manager. Um, but um, it's becoming it's becoming quite quite common. Um, and and uh, the I mean the, um, at this point, the, um, I would say over over a hundred libraries that are doing this in one form or the other. I've never heard anything bad. I mean, I think most people are are aware that if you if you're if you're kind of taking food uh, from a library and you're not paying for it, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's not the people. same as you went to buy it at the grocery store and they're responsible. For, mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, all right, so here's another comment. Uh, one of the issues we have run into with the USDA programs is that they are limited to children. Mm, yeah, and yep. some families won't come if the adults can't yes. eat. But yes. we have solved this by having local donors supplement the grant provided food so that the parents can eat as well. Mm -hmm, so we'll start mm -hmm. out with what the USDA is offering you and then have someone else to help. Yeah. 
Yes, yeah, and, and that that is uh, an issue I've heard um, from many many different places, and and yeah, and I think uh, and it, it sounds like that that uh, participant they're they're kind of doing what I've seen other libraries do as well. So, um, uh, and so local donors uh, supplement the the grant. Um, I've often seen libraries work with local food banks, uh, so food banks can mm -hmm. uh, often provide meals for adults. Um, um, but yeah, it is. Uh, so the USDA summer feeding program, um, you're you're legally only allowed to provide meals for minors um, aged 18 and younger, um, and so that that is uh, an issue that. Um, uh, but I, I also think, um, yeah, I think it would be important to, um, to let let the, the USDA know, kind of just uh, tell them, like, this is an issue we're, we're experiencing. Mm -hmm. So the more that they know that this is an issue, the more there may be the, um, the political wherewithal to, to actually change the policy. Um, but yeah, that is um, an issue. And change it or come up with another program that's for yes. families, for everyone yeah. in a family. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see another one. We teach um, another... Uh, what some of the library does. We teach kitchen and nutrition life skills classes mm -hmm. in the after school program using um, the home ec room. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Great. Mm -hmm. That's definitely something. It just how to how to how to cook, how to use the kitchen, how to <laughs> how to mm -hmm. cut your veggies correctly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm, I'm I'm assuming uh, when that participant mentioned using the home ec room that there this this sounds like it may be an outreach program so uh something maybe an off-site program at the school um which again uh they're the school's not not usually having classes so those those facilities whether it be the home ec room or the cafeteria they may mm -hmm. be available to do do programs in during the summer mm -hmm. months um um Yes. Um, yep. Actually, she actually clarified because you mentioned that she said yes. It is outreach at the school. Yep. Mm -hmm. Today. So this is the library working with the school. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll just uh, I'll make a quick plug. Um, uh, so we had um, uh, so if you want to see, I asked these same questions and did the same exercise um, at the Association for Rural and Small Libraries conference. Um, and we had a packed room. I think there was close to 60 people in that room. So there was a pretty <laughs> pretty lively conversation. So if you go to the go to the website, you can see kind of I actually uh, posted. Um, the answers that people gave to these questions um, mm -hmm. on, 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 on my website. So you can see what other people from across the country said uh, has worked for them, what concerns mm -hmm. they have, and and what are what are people uh, interested in trying as well. And I'm mm -hmm. going to post this as well. <laughs> so okay. after, after this, I'll post, uh, I'll post this um, to, um, to the website as well. Awesome. All right. Yeah, because we got a lot of other people who've also commented with more ideas. And things okay, too. great. Yeah, um, yeah. And we yeah. have time. So, yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah. Well, we it. absolutely. See, it's only uh, 10 50 or so great, here great. Central Time. Great. So, we have at least another 10 15 minutes that we can go with this. Great, great. Wow. Yeah. So, what, uh, what are people saying in the comments? Um, let's see. Here's another one. We've offered summer feeding programs for several years, as well as cooking classes for all ages. We also have gardening programs for children each summer. Um, and they say, now I'm very eager to start a seed catalog program this spring, and I love the idea of a monthly senior monthly senior lunch. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Working on some things already and extending out. Um, and here is an extension agent says we partner with the High Point Public Library okay. to host a yearly seeds to share event every February for community gardens and pair it with a community discussion about how to start a community garden, how to save seeds, etc. And that this has been a great partnership. Yeah, um, yeah, and High Point, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, so I'm here in Greensboro, Guilford County. The High Point Library is just, um, just amazing. Um, let me see if I can. So yeah, keep. Uh, so Krista, if you want to read the next comment, I'm gonna actually uh, see if I can find the link really quickly that I can sure, share sure. about about the work that High Point is doing. But yeah, go ahead and. Yep, and this is another one that bring. Uh, the next one is another one that brings an extension. Uh, we bring them into the library for programming and they offer classes on canning, freezing, um, healthy cooking in a crock pot. Mm -hmm. So a lot of creative ways to work with your foods. Um, oh, and here's a nice thing. This person says they are a volunteer at their local thrift store, um, which is also a thrift, uh, thrift store slash food pantry. Um, and she says, I build silk floral arrangements for my own personal silks. All sales go to stocking the food pantry. Um, and this is something the pantry board would definitely be interested in is doing more things really well linked to the library. Let's see, let me check here. 
Yeah, and I just put a link in the, I don't know if, um, yeah, I think Christy, you may need to share it out, but um, this is mm -hmm. just a link. Uh, I think this is um, the extension agent uh, in Guilford County. Um, yeah, this is, uh, they, they've started this children's garden club in the summer. I mean, they do programs for all ages, but in particular during the summer months, uh, every Thursday is uh, the children's garden club meeting. Um, and they, they really, uh, it includes STEM, so it's a great opportunity to learn about science, technology, engineering, and math uh, through gardening. Um, and sure. so really, yeah, uh, and so, and here in North Carolina, we have a large growing season, so they're able to do it not only in the summer, but, um, but, but yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of great resources here on, on the, this website about mm -hmm. their, um, their uh, High Point Public Library Gar Children's Garden Club, uh, which again, um, is uh, a partnership, um, uh, it wouldn't be possible uh, without the, the the robust partnerships that the the High Point Library has with the North Carolina uh, State Extension System. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, the school does the summer feeding program. This one, uh, they bring lunches to the library on event days, so the kids don't have to choose one or the other. Mm -hmm. So when the library is doing something specific. Mm -hmm. They do it at the library instead of at the school over the summer. That's mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Go where the kids are. Go where your patrons are. That's a common thing for anything a library does. Yeah. Um, and then someone has a question uh, specifically. Do you know of any USDA type grants targeted to seniors in need? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is a really good question. Um, I I personally do not know off the top of my head, but let me go ahead. I, I think you can see my screen. Uh, so um, mm -hmm. if there was grants available, it would probably be through the um, National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Um, that's the, the NIFA. Um, and so uh, if there was, uh, if, the, if the USDA had um, a grant, uh, it would probably be through NIFA. Um, but a lot of what USDA does is they they provide block grants to their their state uh, the state yes. extension system, so uh, you could look at the USDA website, but you may also want to just look at your your state extension uh, website. They may have um, uh, funding uh, for a local a local program. A lot of what the the USDA uh, as a national entity funds are, are large national projects. So. Uh, for local local funding, my my recommendation would be to look at your um, your state extension system that's going to be uh, part of your whatever land grant university you have um, in your particular state or territory. Yeah, um, I know. Yeah, because I, I handle you know trying to get grants and ideas for grants to libraries, uh, and some of these you know block, community block grants, USDA grants are just. Um, you're not necessarily going to find something that says this is a grant for the, a particular topic. It's going to be, we offer grants to communities. You come up with the project you want to do and tell us about it, mm -hmm. and then we'll see, but we're going to give you the money. So yeah. um, just look for things in general about community uh, grants for your commute for communities, for your municipalities, for uh, public uh, departments of whatever, um, and then you know make up your project that you want them to fund. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just on that funding, um, I want to make a quick plug. Um, so there's this. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it now. Um, there's a there's, there's a great website, uh, which of course now I'm not able to find. Um, but there's a finding. There's a there's a resource for finding fu funding from foundations for libraries. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about, Krista. Oh, um, here it is, visualizing. So I'll, I'll put a link here. I finally found it, libraries.foundationcenter.org. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes. And so it's really, I mean, it's pretty robust, actually. Like, uh, I, I spent some time looking at North Carolina. Um, and so you can you can actually drill down and find uh, foundations uh, that may be in your area um, that uh, oftentimes they love this type of thing. I mean, local foundations, mm -hmm. they love doing things to help people uh, live better lives um, and eat better and, and yeah, kind of, um, and so local foundations uh, uh, are just uh, wonderful, wonderful sources of, of funding as well. Um, and so again, it's uh, kind of having that that kind of idea that, that you wanna do and kind of, um, and then it's just a question of, of kind of networking with uh, the foundation. Um, but I, I think, yeah, foundations are just a wonderful source of funding for, for kind of larger initiatives. And, and they're oftentimes uh, really excited to, to, to provide funding to public libraries for these types of mm -hmm. programs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's see, we've got a few, um, few more questions, uh, comments. Okay, great, great. 
Um, uh, someone wants to know if you can share again the link to the ARSL feedback. Oh yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't actually include that. So that's um, I will. Uh, so that's uh, on my website. Um, I'll put the link in the chat. But if you click on let's move libraries.org um, events um, and then just look for the ARSL logo here. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll actually put a link. Um, I, if you click on uh, this partial transcript, because uh, the, I say a partial transcript because the conversation was so rich, I, I wasn't able to record everything. But um, <laughs> it was a really, really great conversation. Um, and so it was really, yeah, people talking about working with every everyone from the VFW to FFA, um, uh, American Legion. Uh, yeah, so just a wow. really, really, really a great conversation at ARSL. And, and hopefully we'll be able to do more. Um, I'll, I'm definitely going to be in Wichita. Uh, so a quick plug at the end of, I think, it, well, I think it's actually going to be in, in October, October 2020 in Wichita um, as the next Association for Rural and Small Libraries. Um, and oftentimes your state library will actually provide funding to enable you to go. Um, yeah, yes. We just put out another push about it here in Nebraska. If you are a Nebraska library, our continuing education grants this year um, that are well, they're open. The applications open right now for 2020 are all being specifically are all um, reserved, so to speak, for mm -hmm. attending ARSL because Wichita is like from anywhere in Nebraska, and uh, three to four hours just south. We can, we can drive. <laughs> Yeah, have to yeah. fly this time. So yeah, here in Nebraska, we are offering grants um, here through the Library Commission and through our regional library systems are offering theirs. So you can combine our grant and theirs and um, ours are $500 grants and each of our systems have their own different ones. Um, so yes, if you're in Nebraska, go to our website, apply. We have this money. It's set aside for you to go to ARSL. It's a great conference for small and rural um, mm -hmm. libraries. Highly, highly recommended. Yes, me too. And if you're in another state, look to your state library and ask. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's see what else we have here. Um, we have, someone says, we've also worked with the National Center for Families Learning. They provide grants to help us host family educational programs, including food. The food is the biggest draw to get people in, of course. <laughs> and we also do a short program about learning together as a family. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Food is always a big attraction for anything. I'm sure that you do, even if you just provide the food. As you know, there will be treats at this event um, or refreshments. But having a place where an event where people are actually learning about the food or making it themselves mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. probably just as enticing to people. Uh, let's see. Now, someone else says we have not tried it yet, but are looking into using the kitchen facilities in community clubhouses to present programs, mm -hmm. uh, especially low-income communities with the, that have the, fil the facilities available. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look out into your into your community and see where is there somewhere you know, you might not have some place in the library. I know some libraries have a, a kitchen area for preparing, doing things for their events, but it's not really a kitchen that can be used, unlike that Charlie cart to mm -hmm. present the program, but maybe somewhere else who has a larger one or something, a larger area would be able, somebody you could work with. Um, and uh, someone here says, also, I am interested in building a community garden at a local park um, because mm -hmm. we don't have any green space at mm -hmm. the library to mm -hmm. do it in. So mm -hmm. have to find somewhere else in, in the community to actually uh, do that. Yeah, um, yeah, and I've all, I've also heard of libraries. If there is a community garden already uh, in existence, uh, I know some places the library will basically secure a plot in that garden uh, that they use for programs. Um, so uh, just kind of having having a library plot at at the existing community garden that they they can use for programming um, and education during during in particular the summer months. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... And that is the last one that was typed right. in. Anybody have anything else you want to share? We're, we're just a couple of minutes after 11 a.m. Central Time officially, um, but uh, we won't get cut off uh, for our show here. We can go as long as needed, as long as people are here or, and uh, no, I can hang out. So if anybody has any last minute things they want to share, um, things they've done, or uh, questions you want to ask of Noah or anyone else in the in who's in attendance here about um, tips and tricks for doing any of these things, um, get it typed into your question section there. 
And I will mention too, while while we're here, um, I will I do I have already put onto the session page for today's show the link to the um, Let's Move in Libraries page specifically for Encompass Live for this episode. Uh, so that'll be available to you um, to um, access uh, very quickly from there. And then that has, as, as no saying, all the links to his slides, all the other things we've been talking about and, and everything. You can explore the whole website and find the ARSL session as well. So that will be all available to everyone. Um, well, it's, it's there right now. Yeah. Great. Yeah, and hopefully uh, I'll be able to meet some of you in person at ARSL in 2020. Um, I'll look forward to that. Please come yeah. up and introduce yourself if you are I there. I will be there. <laughs> great, great. I'm definitely going. Um, we have many thanks for a helpful session. We're, we're, that was the idea, definitely. Great. Yeah, thanks everyone for, for coming and participating today. Yeah, and sharing what you've been yeah, doing. Sharing, exactly. Some great ideas, some great resources, definitely. All right, doesn't look like anybody is has typed in anything, any more ideas, but we did get quite a lot, yes. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. So any last words, Noah, before we do wrap things up and I do my um, No, no, yeah, just uh, thanks everyone for coming. Um, and uh, yeah, please do consider me a resource as well um, going forward. Great. Um, so this is this is a great show. Like as, as you said, you know, we've done a show before about um, the gardening at our Beatrice T Library. But I know I see lots of libraries doing these kind of things for for food um, and events, and uh, even the whole get let's move in libraries of um, other things that are not just you know this this particular session today was about feeding food feeding America. But um, looking at the let's move in libraries page, you'll find lots of things about uh, uh, activities and. Mm -hmm. you know, getting exercise and doing those kind of programs at the library. So um, look into that too. All right, so I am going to pull back presenter control okay. to my computer here. So um, thank you, Noah, for being with us this morning. Like I said, this was a great session. Um, was glad to have everyone here. So you should be seeing my screen. There we go. So here is the session page for today. And you can see here I did add the link that opens up to the uh, there it is the specific page for um, our show, but you can get to all the other ones over on the side here too. So go ahead and explore everything. Um, and the slides are available here. Uh, the document that he's been typing up while we've been all chatting will be available um, when it's ready and put up on there as well. Um, so someone did also ask, and so that's, uh, that will wrap it up for today's show officially. Um, but someone did ask about getting an attendance certificate. Uh, yes, um, about an hour after our show's end here, you'll get an email that is a uh, thank you for attending our show. And it does have a PDF uh, certificate of just a proof of attendance of the live show, um, a live Encompass live show. So you will have that coming coming to you soon um, after everything is, is uh, done. So that will wrap it up for today. Uh, and I'm going to go to our Encompass Live page here. Um, so far on, la, on the intranets, uh, Encompass Live is the only thing called that. So you can use your search engine of choice, type in Encompass Live, and it will come up with our website. Uh, today's show has been recorded and will be here on our website. This is our upcoming shows, but right beneath Underneath them is our archives. Today's show will be at the top of the list. The most recent ones are at the top here. I will have a link to the recording that will be on, this is the one for last week, the recording will, that is on, uh, will be posted to our YouTube channel and the link to today's presentation, um, the page from the Let's Move in Libraries is already there for you. Uh, when it is ready, I will email, um, hopefully by the end of the day today, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube all cooperate with me. I will email everyone who attended today and everyone who registered to let you know that that it is um, ready for you to watch. And while we're here on the archives page, I will show you, we do have a search feature here. Where you can search all of our archives. You wanna find the top, uh, see what kind of shows we've had. Um, you can search the entire archives or just the most recent 12 months if you want to. Um, this is because Encompass Live started in January, 2009, and we are still going strong 10 years-ish later. And we have all of our archives are here on this page. This is this really, really long page. You can see if I kept scrolling, all the way back to 20, 2009 is on here. So we do have a 
search feature. Uh, so when you are looking for things on here and searching, just pay attention. Everything has a date of when it was originally broadcast, so you can know, you know how old the information might be on a particular session. Um, some of our sessions, they, take, they, they last the test of time, no big deal. The, the information is going to be always useful to you. But for some things, depending on the topic, the resource might no longer exist, the web page may have moved, uh, the service may have changed substantially. So just pay attention to the original broadcast date if you are looking through any of our archives. Um, we also do have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. We push out to there our information about things that are going on. <clears throat> Excuse me, here's a reminder about logging into today's show, um, reminders of what letting people know, if I scroll down a bit here, when um, our recordings are available. This is last week's show. So if you are uh, using Facebook, give us a like over there and you can keep up to, th up to date on things we're doing. Only a couple of times a week do we post things on there. Uh, and other than that, um, I hope you join us for next week's show where we will be talking with United for Libraries, uh, Trustees, Advocates, Friends, and Foundations, the Voice for American as Libraries. Uh, United for Libraries is the ALA division that is the for any friends and foundations, so um, they're going to be talking about the things that they have coming up in the next year. Um, Beth uh, Nowalinski is the Executive Director, and um, she will be joining us with um, Peter Pearson, who is the current president of United for Libraries. So if you have a friends or foundation group or your board that wants to learn more about how to do that, you can um, uh, sign up and watch um, next week's show with us. Uh, uh, one of our libraries here in Nebraska, Keene Memorial Library, was awarded the Baker and Taylor Award from United for Libraries, their friends group uh, was nominated and received it. So the librarian from there will be talking about that as well. So please do sign up for that show or any of our other future shows coming up. Uh, thank you, everyone, for attending, and we will see you uh, another, next time on Encompass Live. Thanks. Bye-bye.